Hey everybody, welcome back to Garden Sound. My name is Garden Sound, of course. Lila's not here today. This is a brand new series that I'm going to be starting as part of season four. And again, with the last episode, if you don't want to see the introduction to this series and you want to skip straight ahead to the lesson, just go to this timestamp right here. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my studio. Lila the bird is not here today. It's just me, but I want to tell you about this series. It's called Theory in the Daw. This is going to be a two-part series, meaning that every video is going to have two parts. There's going to be 10 videos in total, and I'm really excited to make this available to you all. Part free, part paid for, more on that later. But why am I doing this? I've tried a theory course before on this channel. It didn't really work out. I think it was called How to Literally Write Music. That's going to be in the description below if you want to see it. I focused too hard on notation and 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 like writing notes on the page and the problem with that is that most people who are into electronic music or most people who are into music these days don't know how to read and write music and that's okay so instead of fighting that instead of telling everybody oh you need to learn how to write music I got this brainwave where I was like what if I taught you all theory inside of the piano roll so that's why this course is called theory in the doll but this is my baby I've been tuning this and retooling this for months um, I've been kind of hinting that I'm gonna be doing this type of thing um, and I'm happy to announce that I'm officially partnering on this series with live producers online. Now I've been hinting for a while that I'd be doing this and that I'd be starting to go a little bit more off platform. There's many reasons for that. One reason is that YouTube is just tightening down and tightening down and tightening down the algorithm uh, to promote certain types of content and certain channels. Um, plenty of my videos have been demonetized. My AdSense is absolutely in the crapper right now. So you know what YouTube, this is your own fault. <laughs> but I wanna let you all know that this isn't going to be a series where I'm gating the information, right? I'm not going to be gatekeeping here. What's going to happen in this series is that the first half of the video, right, where I'm going to be talking about concepts, theory, etc., um, the, the, the knowledge that's portable, right, the things that we could learn in any DAW, whether it be Pro Tools, Cubase, Ableton, Reason, etc., that's all going to be available on this channel. But then when it comes to things like Ableton-specific um, hacks, devices, etc. I'm going to be taking that off platform to live producers online. So if you'd like to sign up for a membership there and check out the entirety of these lessons, that's going to be available in the description down below. If you sign up using the link in the description below, it does help out the channel. Um, so you can feel great about that. If you're interested in checking that out, link in the description below. But anyway, let's jump into today's lesson. We're going to be talking about tonality and atonality, the difference between the two, what exactly they mean, and how this is going to be the foundation for everything else we're going to learn in this series. According to Wikipedia, tonality is the arrangement of pitches and or chords of a musical work in a hierarchy of perceived relations, stabilities, attractions, and directionality. In this hierarchy, the individual pitch or triadic chord with the greatest stability is called the tonic. Whoa, let's break that apart. Tonality is the arrangement of pitches and or chords for a musical work in a hierarchy of perceived relations, stabilities, attractions, and directionality. Okay, so what? It's a vague definition and I think it's being vague on purpose because a lot of people like to get into fights about what this stuff means. So. The arrangement of pitches and or chords of a musical work in a hierarchy, meaning that there is an agreed upon relationship between pitches, between chords. Certain chords are more important than other chords and certain notes are gonna be more weighted than other notes in a particular scale, in a particular chord, in a particular work, okay? It's not defining how long a piece of music is or anything like that, it's just saying, what is tonality given the context of the stuff? Why am I doing my hands like this? I'm sorry. And then let's move on to the second sentence. In this hierarchy, the individual pitch of or triadic chord with the greatest stability is called the tonic, meaning that the root or the fundamental or the tonic, if you want to be fancy, um, not tonic like this, I mean tonic like this. There we go. Note or the pitch or the chord with the most weight is going to be called the tonic or it's going to be called the root. And for our intents and purposes, I want us to call it or refer to it as the fundamental or the root, okay? Because when it gets into more ambient music, more selected kind of, you know, strange electronic genres, it's going to be called fundamental or root and that's going to be more accurate than calling it a tonic because there really won't be too many chordal changes going on. Um, think about dubstep. There's not a whole lot of chordal changes going on, uh, but there is clearly fundamentals and tonics. Let me prove it to you. Everybody knows this song. This is why I'm having to get money off platform because I'm gonna be playing examples and I'll probably get copyright infringement. You can hear that fundamental. That's what the fundamental is. That's the tonic, that's the root. 
It's the pitch that has the most weight. And it's very clear in this song what that pitch is because we rest on it for such a long period of time. But if you went, then went to a guitar or a piano or you sang it into an auto-tune unit or something, that pitch that, uh, uh, you know, those are octaves. If you sang that, it would tell you, okay, that pitch is this. When you're listening to a piece of music, whether it's electronic, classical, whatever, that root note, that pitch, that fundamental that we keep coming back to, that is the tonic. And that's what the word tonality is based on. I like to think about tonality as gravity. This is kind of a newer concept in terms of theory. What is tonal gravity? What pitch do things sort of revolve around, gravitate toward? Um, so, so in the in the tonal the tonal gravitational model, there's certain chords that are. There's actually a really cool picture for this. I'm going to put it up on screen so you can see it. But this is sort of the hierarchy of tonal gravity. Which pitch is the most weighty? How do you get to it from certain other pitches and chords? But there is this like center, almost like atomic model where it's okay. The tonal gravity is the nucleus, right? The the center of the piece. And now that you know that. It's way easier for me to explain what atonality is because atonality is the absence of a tonal center, the absence of a pull. Let's look at Wikipedia for the definition. Atonality, in its broadest sense, is music that lacks a tonal center or key. So atonality is lacking that tonal center or pull. And a lot of people like to say that atonality started, in fact, it says this in Wikipedia right here. Atonality in this sense usually describes compositions written from about 1908 to present day where a hierarchy of pitches focusing on a single central tone is not used and the notes of the chromatic scale function independently of one another. Here's the funny part. That's actually serial music. Um, so a lot of people like to say that Schoenberg and the, you know, the second Viennese school was atonal. That's not correct. They're serialists. It's totally different. Um, that, that's actually using mathematical principles in order to sort of um, hack the system. Atonality in its broadest sense, as it says here, is just lacking a tonal center. And one of the first examples of that is actually in Beethoven's late string quartets. Take a listen to this. This is from Beethoven's string quartet number 14 in C sharp minor, the very opening of this piece. Doesn't really have a strong tonal center. Until about 30 seconds in, you really have no idea what key we're in. And then, you know, it is stated eventually. This is classical music after all. This was revolutionary. Um, and toward the end of Beethoven's life when he was going completely deaf, when he started to come up with these really heady kind of pieces. If you've never heard this entire piece or any of his other late string quartets, I highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's, a great, it's, it's great to just hear, uh, you know, once or twice in your life. Let's dive into Ableton for just a second so I can show you how some of this stuff is going to look in the piano roll. So we have a pitch here. This is our fundamental. This is C. Isn't that great? So when we're talking about tonality, if we're writing something that's tonal, everything's going to be kind of based around this C right here. Everything's going to be kind of sort of, um, you know, gravitating around C. So there's a couple pitches that sound really good with C. Let's put those on the board. Starting with the most obvious, which is going to be the third of the scale for C. And we're going to be getting into scales and tonality and keys a little bit more later. This is, this is just an overview of tonality. That sounds nice, doesn't it? So this is where our perceived, right? If we go back to the definition for tonality, our perceived hierarchy, right? We perceive harmony as either consonant or dissonant. And there are consonances and dissonances in tonal music. It's the function of those consonances and dissonances that determine whether or not something is tonal or atonal. It's the function of this sounding good and also this sounding not good, not great. It's the function of the consonants and dissonants inside of the gravity, right, of C, right, the pitch center of C that form tonality. So again, tonality and atonality are very broad definitions, very broad topics today. And so that's as far as we're gonna go for lesson number one. If you have any comments whatsoever, please leave me a comment in the comment section down below. If you're excited about this series and ready for more videos, please hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to click on the notifications bell. Now, I'm about to jump into some more stuff in terms of Ableton specific utilities you can do to sort of um, force tonality and atonality into your music if you're stuck. 
If you'd like to see that, you're gonna to have to follow me over to liveproducersonline.com, which is where the remainder of this episode is gonna be. Links in the description down below. But as always, my name is Garden Sound. I'll see you in the next episode.